Hey guys, it's John from The Busy Cast. I am joined by Martin Waller, who is a Golden Demon painter. Um, and we've been uh, showing a few of his miniatures through a series of videos, and this is the last video, unfortunately. Um, however, the model is probably the best one. It's absolutely incredible, so we're going to talk through it. Um, so, where was this entered? I'm guessing it won. Uh, yeah. Well, it's, um, it was entered into um, Golden Doom Classic at White Fest. Uh, along with a lot of the, the ones that we've spoken about, um, into the dual category. Uh, the dual category, for those who don't know, uh, essentially you have to have uh, two miniatures in some sort of um, fight scene. Right. Um, and you've got to make sure it's on, I think it's a, a 40mm or a 50mm base maximum. Um, so yeah, it's quite a tight sort of working environment. Yeah. Um, so you need to try and make sure what you've got. Uh, and in the rules it says two evenly matched opponents in some sort of dynamic scene. Um, not quite so, you know, evenly matched, but still. Um, so yeah, I, I sort of took, took one look at the uh, the Eversaur Assassin model yeah. uh, that came with the um, Execution Force box. Oh yeah. Took one look at him and thought, that's fantastic, I need, I need to paint one of them, you know, for something. And, and the more I sort of, you know, toyed around with the idea, the more I wanted to incorporate him into you know, some sort of scene. Uh, and that's where the sort of the whole dual um, idea came from initially. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he was entered into um, Condim Classic, he took away a bronze uh, in um, that category, in the dual category, completely over the moon, uh, it's a very hotly contested uh, category this year, um, you know, so I think I was, I was sort of lucky to, to scrape a bronze, but, um, but yeah, over the moon with the result. Cool, very cool. And now, there's a lot going on in this, <coughs> so how did you figure out what you were going to do. How did you come to this being, I mean, you talked about having the assassin in there, but yeah. how did you come up with the sewer idea and that sort of thing? Um, yeah, and essentially I sort of, I went through sort of different sort of um, scenarios and sort of, you know, what ifs, um, and just sort of ended up just having a rummage through my bits box in yeah. the end and just sort of worked out, you know, what have I got uh, and what can I use? And I ended up having the stairs uh, from the Thunderhawk gunship kit from Ford Road. And so I had those left over, little walkways, so that, you know, I was just, Fiddling essentially, you know, yeah. you know, and I wanted the whole scene to be very sort of anti gravity. Oh, right. right. So the whole thing to be very much up in the air. Because uh, obviously, you know, the, the way the assassin is, you know, he's leaping off a wall. So I wanted everything else to sort of complement that in a way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's when the initial idea for the sort of the anti gravity thing came for us. So I thought the whole thing could be run off that set of stairs. Yeah. Um, which creates challenges because obviously, you know, you try and build a model on top of the tiny little contact point on the base. Yeah. So, and that's where the water came in, because I thought, well, okay, well, I can secure it with the water and it will still look a bit cool. Yeah, it gives something, you know, for the, for the person looking at it to actually look at on the top. So, that, you know, rather than just having a flat base with the stairs coming out, I've yeah. now got the water, obviously, bullet casings and splashes and all sorts of stuff going on. So, it just creates a few, you know, a few more interest points. But the whole thing, I wanted to try and sort of create like a, a snapshot from a film. Yeah. Like, you know, if you're sort of watching 300 or something like that, you know, you just pause it and you've got blood flying everywhere, you know, that's what I wanted to try and sort of achieve. Yeah. Um, so, you know, blurred and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's come out quite well. How did you do the, the blood? Is this, again, this uh, you who blew away? <clears> no, no, the blood, the blood was slightly different on this one. And I've got to thank Andy Wardle uh, for, the, um, for the tips on, on, on doing it. Okay. Um, essentially, it was cotton wool. Uh, get a cotton wool ball and just sort of keep thumbing out until it's really, really thin. Yeah. And so you've got sort of, you know, just a few strands. Hold it over the, uh, the top of like a, a deodorant can uh, lid or something like that. Yeah. So it gets me to, to dip in. And then you just get um, two part epoxy resin and just sort of spread that across the top. And what that does is it sort of grips to all the little fibers. All right. Once it dries and sets hard, you get that sort of stringy, sort of blobby effect. Yeah. Um, so that's how that, how that comes out. And obviously once that's dry and it's solid, Snipping it off and then super gluing it onto it and hoping and praying for the best. Yeah. So yeah, wow. it worked out well. It did, it really did. What's your favourite <coughs> part of this of this mini then? Um, as sad as it is, my favourite part I think is the the bottom of the assassin's foot. Um, oh yeah. I was I was looking at sort of different, you know, because if you look at it from the angle it's sort of meant to be viewed at, um, you know, you you see everything there. But what obviously with Golden Demon, the way the judges look at it. 
there were always seat models from behind because um, obviously they're looking from the other side of the cabinet to you know to everyone else. So you've got to try and make little things for them to sort of grab their attention. Yeah. Um, so on the back, uh, I added the hazard stripes on the back and also on the bottom of his foot. I decided to add a little footprint so if he's been running along this sort of you know rusted corridor, um, you know, so he's got the toes and his you know the arch of his foot and all that sort of stuff on there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's probably my my, you know, my favourite little detail. Cool. And what was your biggest takeaway? What did you learn from this uh, from doing this one? Um, I mean, this lasted this project lasted for about a year on and off. Right. Um, so it was a bit of a, a labour of love. Um, the water, um, you know, I changed repeatedly, uh, and the way the water, you know, sort of sat on the base, uh, I changed quite often. Also, the water coming out of the pipe. So I think the main thing was don't be don't be afraid. You know, if you've done something and you cocked it up, yeah, don't be afraid to just chop it off and start again. Right. Because the water coming out of the pipe initially was sort of black sludge, and it just didn't sit right at all. Okay. Um, so you know, chopped it all off. You know, everything was all painted. It was all done as per. Um, but you know, took a pair of clippers to it, and chopped it off and, and redid it. So yeah, don't don't be scared to you know to, to change things if you if you're not you know completely happy with it. Cool. <clears throat> we have a question from Darren behind the camera. Yeah, um, I noticed you've given the, the uh, piece a name on it, and I think that last bit, that, that detail, really does make the model. Where did you get the idea for that? Yeah, um, I think the name Expergatum Extremis, yeah, I, yeah, it kind of sets the tone. Um, you know, I, I do that with a lot of models. Um, if I want to sort of portray a particular um, sort of, you know, theme or whatever, you know, like the Keeper of the Blade. Um, or you know you know the spider with if you go down to the woods today so you know little things like that you know, just give it a bit more of a professional approach. Um, I racked my mind for ages trying to think of something for this and it was killing me. Uh, and in the end, someone you're going to remain nameless um, came up with Expergatum extremis, which is some sort of faux Latin or real Latin maybe um, for uh, deletion or expunging uh, extremely. So um, yeah, Darren. Came up with that um, <laughs> late night over chat over WhatsApp trying to work out the name for it. So, yes, thank you, Darren, for uh, help with the name. <laughs> Very cool. Well, that's it. That's all the all the miniatures covered um, for now. At least. What what where are you going next? What's what's next? What's going uh, on? Next up is Golden Demon Warhammer, which is the Age of Sigmar open day. Yeah. In August. Uh, so I'm doing a, a Gordrak Fist of Gork. Yeah. Um, dismounted, so he's not going to be a big dragon, but he's just going to be on foot. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to try and get that done. Uh, it's quite a tight deadline with that one, because obviously, like I said, this one took me a year. I've yeah. got less than six weeks to um, to do Gordrak. So wow. It's firing him out nice and quick, so yeah, we'll see how we get on. Hopefully, 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 hopefully another video to show off. Exactly, I think one day we'll see another that. That'll be amazing. Cool, well that's it. That's it for all those um, Golden Demon miniature videos for now, at least. Uh, we do have a battle report between Dark Eldar and Ravenwing, so you can watch that. So, not all over yet. Um, if you guys can like, comment, subscribe, it makes a huge difference. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. Cheers.